It is absolutely an amazing and terrifying thing at the same time to watch the economic collapse of the United States happening in real time, right in front of everybody's eyes, and the vast majority of the people that it's going to affect being virtually blind to it. Both presidential candidates have now come out and made a promise, if elected, they are going to do something that is going to eliminate any possibility of anyone surviving in the future in some kind of an underground cash economy. It's something that a lot of preppers had been planning for for years. We're going to stockpile cash, and then we're going to you know, live in our own barter societies and only use the, the cash in absolute emergency situations. Well, that's all gone now. Florida Maquis, what are you talking about? I haven't heard anything about this. Both presidential candidates have now promised they are going to eliminate taxes on tips. Now, nobody is seeing what the real game is with this. It is about eliminating the underground economy. It is about eliminating cash because here's what's going to happen. What were classified as tips before are now going to be reclassified as fees. And the taxes on those will be extravagant. And people will just not pay them. How many of you have had the experience of having a quote-unquote automatic gratuity added when you thought, wow, I thought I could just tip based on service? How many places do you know now that are going to this model with automatic over a certain amount? That's all going to get reclassified as a service fee. And the taxes on that will be much, much higher because it will be classified in a completely different way. It's going to cause all sorts of problems as well if either candidate tries to do this, because what they're in essence doing is saying to one group of people, we're going to give you a raise while everybody else you work with, we're going to charge them more. I very much doubt they're going to follow through on it, but if they do, it will be the death knell for the cash economy. What if I told you that the Republic is now under the control of the Dark Lord of the Sith? And I have proof for this. Real quick. Battlefield of the Mind. Florida Maquis, I understand what you're saying, but can you explain this more? I just, it sounds like a really good idea. It's not. It's absolutely not a good idea, but we are going to go a little bit farther down the road than what we're allowed to here on YouTube over at the Patreon channel. One US dollar per month. That's it. Not a tip, by the way. Not a tip. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable first 90 days. No questions asked. Even these platforms are going to a different model very, very soon. This coming November, in fact. And to a lot of people, it's going to seem like a good thing. But to others who have the ability to see through this, it's going to spell, oh, disaster, basically, for anyone else. Now, it is a tip if it isn't required. If you pull out a handful of change or bills and you are under no compunction to do so, and because someone went over and above what they were required to do, and you then hand those paper bills or a giant handful of change or whatever you have to someone, that is a tip. That is a tip. If you hand them a card and they come back and then you fill in a little line that says tip, you see, they have to pay taxes on that. They have to pay taxes on that now. It counts as their income. And it is something that big business absolutely loves because they get to charge you more based on guilt. They get to charge you more based on guilt. And they get a piece of it. When have you ever known government to give up a piece of the action? Trust me when I tell you that whomever gets elected now on this topic, it's going to be the exact same thing as what happened in The Empire Strikes Back. How many of you remember when Han Solo got frozen in carbonite? because he trusted his good friend Lando Calrissian, who made a deal with the Empire 
See, Lando was doing some kind of somewhat eh, illegal stuff, and he wanted the Empire to look the other way, so he betrayed his friend, making a deal with this guy, who then altered the terms of the deal, and then threatened him, saying, pray I don't alter it any further. Here's some quick facts about tipped employees, and this is going to blow a lot of your minds. In 2014, tipped workers made up just 3.4% 3 of the U.S. workforce. Now, in January 2020, tipped industries employed nearly 12 million workers, which was 8% of all jobs in the country. 8%. So even now, 8% of all jobs, 92% of people out there working, loaders, their little promise about tips doesn't affect from the extent that it's not going to mess with their income but it will mess with them in another way. Fair warning, there's going to be kind of a image that I'm going to use here that might offend a few people, so maybe swish the kids away from the screen. I'll give it a minute here so that nobody can uh, say that I didn't warn them. Three, two, one. See, here's what's going to happen. All of those tipped industries, here's what's going to happen. Here's going to be the net effect. Well, gosh, I, normally I, I tip this person you know, an extra 50 or 75 or 100, but they don't have to pay taxes on tips now. So really, they're making a lot more. I, oh gosh, I have to, when I when I work, I have to pay taxes on my income. So I, I'm going to, you know, maybe instead of giving them 225, I'm going to give them 150. That's what's going to happen. They're going to get paid less. And whatever tips they do make are going to be classified as fees. Whatever tips they do make, if they're required when this happens, because that's what's going to happen. They're going to start adding gratuities automatically. Then people are going to flip out, and then they're going to classify it as a fee, and then the fees will be taxed. And besides, didn't you know tipping was racist? I'll give you this link. I'm not going to waste your time on this. But it's a relic of uh, the Civil War. There was a very uh, nice and gracious thing that was done in Europe. Um for people who worked in the kitchens and people who worked in service industries, that the very, very, very wealthy, if somebody did a really, really, really good job, they, they would, you know, help them out a little bit, and that got brought back here to the United States, but then it got implemented after the Civil War, and a certain group of people were let be free, but those employing say, well, yeah, they're free, but I don't have to hire them. If I need to hire them, I'm going to pay them nothing, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the you know my customers make up for it. Getting worse and worse all the time. I think a lot of people, once they hear this, they're going to get it. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. They're eliminating the shadow economy. Because who really works for cash? Think about this critically. Whose vote are they really trying to buy? Yeah, that's right. See, there's a lot of people out there that came here who are working underground, who are working off the books, who aren't paying taxes on what they're making. Well, you see, that's all going to go away now because they're not going to classify things as tips anymore. They're going to classify things as fees and uh, service additions and whatever other term you, terminology you want to use. And unless you physically hand somebody cash, it won't be seen as a tip. You see, it was never the case that if I went to a restaurant, per se, and sat down, had a meal, and the bill came, and I pulled some bill out of my wallet and said, hey, put the bill, whatever it was for the food and the drinks, on this card, but this is for you. That person could just take that thing and put that in their pocket and the government wouldn't know anything about it. Now, it was a tip. Of course, that's how tipping is done. There were never any taxes on that. There were never any taxes on that. There were only been taxes on electronic tips. And did you ever know the government say, we're going to give you money back? They're going to find another way to do it. I thought this was a perfect meme to describe it. Here's your sign. Here's your sign. 
anybody who thinks this is you know some wonderful uh, handout and the the beef stew theory the beef stew theory is absolutely the perfect way to describe this what's the beef stew theory maki okay beef stew has a lot of ingredients i want you to imagine you and a group of your friends you're out and you're you're living out in the middle of nowhere you've run away from society and everybody's like you know what we're hungry but man we don't have the ingredients for beef stew and we really would like some beef stew and people start saying well gosh you know i know where i can get some beef but i don't know where i can get any carrots and somebody else chimes in well wait wait i know where i can get some carrots but yeah we need more than beef some other party says well gosh okay i i need some potatoes I know where I can get some. So the, all the ingredients, you have everybody there. You have everybody there who has the ability to get all the ingredients and everybody goes their separate ways. And they come back and everybody's got, everybody's got everything you need. Somebody brought a pot. Somebody went out and actually found some bowls that you can serve it up in. And you make your beef stew and everybody has contributed something to it. So everybody should get an equal amount of beef stew because you all brought it in, right? Well, somebody might say, well, you know, I uh, I brought the beef. And what is beef stew without beef? Sh- shouldn't I get a tip? Shouldn't I get a little bit more? Because what would this be without what I, you know, what I brought? And the person who brought the bowls would say, well, gosh, none of us would be eating anything without my bowls. I deserve a tip too. Me too, I deserve a tip. And then what the person that cooked it? What about the person that made the fire? You see, that waitress that brought you your meal, the one that you're tipping, wouldn't have been able to bring you the meal without a whole bunch of other people all doing their job. The guy who's washing the dishes, the people back in the kitchen, you know, even the managers that keep everything running. In that restaurant, you see, when you say, I'm going to give this little bit of money to this one person right here, who is just the end, I guess, uh, point person for the entire operation, that causes problems. That causes issues. And a lot of restaurants have gone to this model now where they have this this tip out thing. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, well, yeah, you tip out your bus boys and you tip out your, you know. So really, everybody's in on that game. So what is it really? Are you actually tipping a person or are you tipping the entire establishment? And if you're tipping the entire establishment, isn't it really just a service fee? Isn't it really just a service fee? Even though those guys back in the kitchen, they're not being paid as quote unquote tipped employees. They're getting minimum wage. The managers are getting a salary. The guys who mop the floor, they're getting probably minimum wage. Waitress is not. But that's not the point, is it? That's not the point, is it? See, this is this is the game. This is the game. This, this is the idea. This is class envy is what this is. This whole game of we're not going to tax tips is a game of class envy. Because there's going to be a whole bunch of people out there when they decide to pull the rug out on this. And they're going to say, well, get a real job. Get a real job. I can just hear Trump now. Well, I promised we were going to look into, I promised we were going to look into the idea of taxing tips. Just like the whole idea, we're going to look into the idea of repealing and replacing Obamacare. We were going to look into the idea of label labeling China a currency manipulator, even though it was in a contract with America all the different uh, ways he welched and weaseled his way out of all the, the quote-unquote promises, contract, all that crap. And both sides are going to do the same thing. They're going to weasel out of it. They'll find a way to weasel out of it and cause a problem. And if they do, if they don't, they're going to find a way to get that money. They're going to get that money and they're going to get more money. It's a game. It's a game and they know how to play it. They've been doing this for a long time. And believe me, it is. it might as well be called the Cash Elimination Act. The hard currency 
Destruction Act of 2025. Because that's what's going to happen. Anybody who... Because you, I mean, imagine. I mean, you, you hand a bartender a $5 bill, and then all of a sudden some busboy sees that, or some cook sees that, or some manager sees that, and he flips out. And he goes out there, hey, you better report that. You better divvy that up between the cooks and the, the dishwashers. And all. Imagine. Imagine. The problem is going to cause... I mean, they're going, to demand, they're going to demand, if you want to give a tip, that it goes on the bill as a service fee. So they can divvy it up to everybody. No matter how good or bad the dishwashers are, how good or bad the cooks are. You know, when I talk about the destruction of the service industry in this country, mark my words, this is what's coming. So, anyway, when you think about it clearly, battlefield of the mind. I know a lot of people, Patriot Nurse included, big fans of beans and bullets and band-aids, and even lately she said bitcoins and Bibles, and okay, I'm not saying any of that isn't important. But all of that is useless if your mind can be manipulated, or you haven't strengthened your mind to understand what's really going on. So I would add brains to all of those different bees. Beans, bullets, band-aids, bitcoin, Bible brains. Use your brain. Think. Join us. Patreon. So I have it set at the lowest possible allowable, allowable level, one US dollar per month. That's it. If it could be a dime, I'd charge a dime just to create the speed bump. To keep away the trolls, to keep away the censors, to keep away all of the people who would go in there and try to hijack my channel for their own and I still get that once in a while. I'll get people over there that want to post and dump a bunch of links of different things that they think is more important than what we're talking about. Once in a while, and I've got to delete, and I've got to refund. It happens. It happens. But believe me, the vast majority of the content over there, you're definitely going to want to take part in. And we are going to start um, looking into some things that are a little bit different. This ridiculous story about... Uh, well, we theorize now that there are giant oceans of water underneath Mars, but golly gee willikers, they're so far deep now, there's nothing we can do about it, but we're going to still waste millions, if not billions of dollars going to... I mean, how many of you are flat are flat Mars theorists? I mean, they talk about Mars as a... I mean, pfft. I mean, isn't, isn't Mars really flat? I mean, come on, Mars is flat. Everybody knows it's flat. Look up and see. It's flat, Right? We're going to look into a lot of different things going forward because at this point, either you get it or you don't. You get it or you don't. And I'll leave it there. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.